Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, humans would eventually begin to ask, what am I doing? What are you doing? This awareness of the self, along with an ability to reason, is essential to the essence of our species. As time went on, eventually humans began to ask, what am I twittering? What are you twittering? Twitter is a place where people publish all kinds of commentary. Some people talk about their daily lives, some like to point to stories they read around the web, others promote their wares or even themselves. Communication is the essence. That's the obvious stuff, but there's something else going on here that is much deeper. Twitter is not just a place to find out what your friends are doing right now, it's a place to find out what everyone is doing right now. It's a lot like having a surveillance camera that allows you to zoom into the world wherever you want and see what's going on there in real time. Almost as if Google Maps was fed with a live satellite feed. Imagine that I'm dying for a Shake Shack shake, but I'm in a hurry and I want to know if the line is long. I can go to shakeshack.com, look at the live cam, and see that, lo and behold, there's a line. But what if you want to check out a place that doesn't have a live camera on their site? Twitter search it. Twitter search for Shake Shack line. Wow, someone in line says it's slow, and this was updated just 20 seconds ago. All of these tweets from all of these Twitterers create real-time virtual coverage of our world. When Google CEO Eric Schmidt was lamenting the state of the economy and the vulnerability of Google's ad base revenue earlier this week, he rather offhandedly called Twitter a poor man's email system. When he said poor man's email, he didn't just leave women out of the picture, he left out search. It takes Google hours and sometimes days to update returns. Compared to Twitter search, Google search returns suddenly seem old and static. What Schmidt does not say is that Twitter is a poor man's search. Poor person's search. Consider this perspective. Developer Mark Kerry created a Firefox plugin that shows search returns from Twitter right on top of your Google search results. Notice in this case how useful Twitter search could be in a way that Google simply cannot deliver. And that's why Facebook offered to buy Twitter for $500 million. And why Twitter said no. And that's also why Google's Schmidt didn't want to say out loud that Twitter is a search engine. And yes, of course, Google could build their own. In fact, in 2007, Google already made a Twitter play early by purchasing Jaiku, a Twitter clone which some thought was better for having more features. But Jaiku never picked up more users, nor did it ever find a community, and in January, Google announced that it was abandoning Jaiku and released it as open source. Lesson learned? Well, you can build your own Twitter, but the people might not come. While Google, of course, has the resources to buy Twitter, they had already missed the boat with social networking. Facebook poses a serious threat to Twitter, however, for even without a purchase, Facebook has the technology and its users are effectively Twittering through their status updates already. The so-called Facebook tweets aren't as loud, but the potential is there. Google built itself up by giving away free search. It was their ability to monetize the returns with contextual advertising that made Google the darling of the decade. But the gatekeepers of data may have already passed the torch. With 175 million users, Facebook has an immense amount of data that Google can't access. And with over 6 million people twittering at a daunting pace, Twitter currently controls the most contemporary thought stream humanity has ever seen. Now, if only we could answer the question that has plagued our race for millions of years. What are we supposed to be doing?